There we go, place down that bomb. Perfect. Uh, now let's get everyone to stand next to it and um, watch as orcs fly. Truly beautiful art. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we're playing Warhammer 40k Dawn of War The Dark Crusade. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We've only been exploiting games for what feels like probably about five years now, and we're only just now releasing a video on Warhammer 40k Dawn of War. Now, for those of you that don't know what this game is, this is the best Warhammer 40k RTS game out there. It is incredible. It is amazing. It is one of the best games in existence. If you've played the game, pat yourselves on the back. You're amazing. If you haven't played the game, don't worry. You can go buy it still. It's amazing. So what are we doing today in Dawn of War The Dark Crusade? Well, we're going to be doing a very special exploit to completely destroy every other faction in the game by creating an army of unlimited orcs. That's right. We're going to be breaking the game by building an army so powerful and numerically large that the AI simply is unable to handle it, because in this game all armies are limited by a unit cap. But what if Spiff found a way to, I don't know, bypass that unit cap so that there was no limit to the amount of angry orky boys he could have on screen? My god, that would be insanity! And exactly what I've got in store for you today. So ladies and gentlemen, make sure you're sat back, relaxed, you have a nice warm cup of tea in hand, and if you're feeling particularly excited, then make sure to give this video a like. And without further ado, I think it's time we dive our ourselves into a brand new game. But we're going to be starting a brand new campaign on the overworld. We're going to be playing on a nice, comforting, normal difficulty. And when it comes to this game, you can literally play as any faction you like. You can play as the faction which doesn't value human life, the faction that doesn't value the medical practice, the faction that doesn't value any life form they deem lesser, the faction that only values blood, the faction that doesn't even value organs, the faction that really values anime, or the faction that just values things that are green, shouting, and go Dakar. And that is exactly who we're playing. We're playing the Orcs, ladies and gentlemen. The true Horde faction of Warhammer 40k. I'm sorry, Tyranids, you just don't count. Now, the Orcs are fantastic. They're big green people who canonically came from mushrooms. <laughs> who in the Games Workshop writing department decided that Orcs should be technically mushrooms, but um, apparently they are. But yes, we're going to be exploiting as the legendary Orc warlord Gorgut's Ed Hunter, and our plan is to simply murder all of the Humis, Necrons, and Chaos Boys, and then convert the entire world into being a place for Orcs and only Orcs. Now the thing is, Orcs are exceedingly numerous, but they're a very unique faction. Because whilst factions like, say, the Space Marines are very highly trained soldiers who've been genetically engineered to be perfect, they follow their leaders and they have a full military structure, Orcs are absolute idiots. They grab whatever scrap weapons they can find, mount them onto themselves and charge into battle. However, most of the time they don't know where the battle is is, and that means the most powerful orc is simply the orc who has the most flags, because if you have a lot of flags, you can herd the most orcs into the same general direction, and that is the only military strategy that the orcs have access to. Many of you would be thinking that in the future distant year of 40k, a military strategy consisting of just rushing towards the enemy at high speed in large number might not be the smartest idea. However, that's where you're wrong, as we're about to show off some of the most premium orc strategies. So let's throw ourselves onto the campaign map. So here's the campaign map, ladies and gentlemen. Look, I know it's not necessarily graphically much, but when this game was first released, this stuff was mm, premium content. As you can see on the faction map, we have the Tau over here, Eldar over here, Chaos down here, Imperial Guard over here, Necrons, and then Space Marines over there. And to simply win the campaign, all you have to do is take control of all of the faction HQs. It's normally quite a challenge because you have to do turns where you can take regions and defend regions. At the same time, when you capture a region, you can get special bonuses that last campaign-wide, so controlling specific regions is very powerful. And normally, you'll need to control lots of regions if you want to try and make a push for a faction's capital. However, we at the Orcs are not constrained by the limitations of actually planning proper strategy. And instead, we're the faction who are in the absolute perfect spot to completely decimate this game's balance by exploiting the game. And that's exactly what we're going to do with good old Gorguts. So naturally, my first opening move is to attack the space weebs in the Agamar Desert using the legendary Gorgut's War. So yes, we're going to attack this region. It's got a strength
strength of one, so this is technically the easiest region in the game. The enemy simply has a skilled commander, they, uh, they're mostly going to field infantry, and they have a single base. The perfect region to test my incredible exploit. So we arrive in the Agmar Desert, and immediately we're in a prime spot to really start the cheesing. Now in this game, we can build a whole bunch of fun little buildings, including listening posts, generators to make electricity, and all that fun stuff. So we're going to start out the game by making a couple of generators. Now this is a classic RTS game, meaning that effectively you need to build units, capture resource points to generate resources, and then throw units out onto the wider map. However, this is a strategy game, meaning your resources are limited. In the case of most factions, they have a limited amount of infantry that they can yield. This for us is called the Orc Cap. Technically our cap goes up to 15. Then there's also the Vehicle Cap, the amount of vehicles that we can have on the map. Basically, the more squads of units you have, the more you're going to fill up that meter, meaning you can't field a massive army to cover the entire map. However, what if you could? And that's exactly what we're going to do, because we're playing the Orcs, who are absolutely insane. I mean, they're literally a faction that takes strategic resource points by banging an axe on the floor and then raising a flag. Equally, when it comes to building buildings, how do they do it? Well, they do things a little bit differently to most other factions. Let's say we want to build a warg banner over here. Well, a plane comes along and yeets a whole bunch of scrap metal into the floor, then a whole bunch of tiny goblins come along with giant wooden mallets and somehow turn this into a fortification. Oh no, we're under attack. A tau has arrived. Uh, this is the enemy commander, but it'll be fine. We'll be able to build up this banner. Here comes our commander. To sort out these little angry tower boys. Uh, it's okay, they won't be able to defeat Gorguts. Anyway, we've captured our first strategic requisition point, meaning we'll start having some resources ticking on in. Oh my goodness, how's our fight going? I think we just killed the enemy commander. Yeah, we just killed the enemy tower commander with our <laughs> commander right at the start of the game. Well, that's made things a little bit easier. Now, why did I build this Warg banner, ladies and gentlemen? Well, that's because the Warg banner is a very unique building. Unlike most buildings in the game, the Warg banner is special because this is a banner that summons Orc to battle. You can tell because it literally has the word Warg written on it in very bold paint, and this means that if a Orc is standing somewhere over here, they'll see that sign and know that they need to start assembling at our massive mega war camp. And so what does that mean from a gameplay perspective? Well, it means that our Orc cap has been raised up to 25. This means that we can actually have more Orcs on the field of battle, we can have more squads, and we can make our squads more exciting. However, this still isn't perfection. We're still going to need a few more than just a single banner. In fact, we're going to be needing a lot of banners. Now, banners are the most overpowered building in this game because not only do they increase our unit cap, but they're also a turret. Anyway, we're going to be capturing a few more strategic posts, building listening posts on them, and then watching our lovely requisition point slowly tick on up. We're up to plus 44 requisition, which is very nice indeed. Our energy could do with being increased. And then beyond that, we also need to spam out our all cap a whole bunch more. Now, in order to get our energy really sorted, I'm going to spam build a whole bunch of generators everywhere. Now for this strategy to work, we don't actually need to leave our base at all. All we need to do is spam down a whole bunch of wild banners. And the best thing about the strategy of spamming down a whole bunch of wild banners is that it's actually a perfect counter rush because this is a defensive building. Players can't rush into it with garbage early infantry. You need to tech up to actually defeat a wild banner. This means that this strategy is even more overpowered because there is no way to stop it. Now when it comes to our squads, we can actually flesh out our regular infantry squads here. These are just standard slugger boys, the worst unit we have. Well, after the goblins. Sorry, no, I mean Gretchens. They're legally distinct from goblins. The sluggers can effectively wield a very large squad number, but every time we add a new unit to this squad, it takes up our orc cap. And as we can see, our army currently takes up 19 out of the 35 orc cap that we can have. But our orc cap is ever increasing, as you can see, because we're building even more banners. Now, in order to stop the Tau from taking back this listening post and area, all we have to do is simply build a nice listening post and then slam down a whole bunch of banners, and that should be enough to stop the Tau from even being able to expand in this general direction. And then once we've got our stable source of income sorted, we can start the next stage of the plan, which is to completely destroy this game. Right, there we go. There's another requisition post built. Now all we need to do is surround this bad boy in WAG banners. I really do love the orc construction method of just sheeting scrap into the ground. It's beautiful, it really is. Now as you can see, orcs, uh, they're not necessarily the best fighters. I mean, they get thrown around a bunch, they don't do an insane amount of DPS, but what makes them special is their sheer numbers. Right, now it is basically time to start spamming out the necessary wild banners, so it's time for me to start spamming
spamming down the buildings and the Gretchen squads will immediately run over there and get them all constructed. All right, and with that final WAG banner constructed, we've actually hit the cap of what you can get from building WAG banners, which is a Orc population cap of 100. That's right, 100 is the maximum the game will actually let you have. There's only one slight issue. This isn't technically the limit because there isn't really a limit if you play your cards correctly. Now, what I'm going to do is already set ourselves up for this insane exploit by building a huge amount of Du Bois huts. This is our infantry spawning building. And this is the building where we're able to recruit everything from green knobs to slugger boys. And considering that this exploit is already so stupidly overpowered, we're going to be limiting ourselves to only slugger boys, the most basic of infantry. Now, um, the Tau aren't very good against the orc setup of basically only melee units, which does give us a nice strong advantage against them in combat. At the same time, we can technically bring tanks out. And I mean, orc tanks aren't necessarily the best, considering one of their best tanks is just a tank that they stole from the Imperial Guard. It is literally called a looted tank. Right, the researchers now come in and slugger boy squads are now completely free to recruit. They don't cost us any resources beyond the pop cap. That's right, these guys take up four pop cap for a single squad, so naturally I'm going to spam out an infinite quantity of them, and that's going to take us up to our pop cap of 100. There you go, we've hit 99 out of 100. That means we've hit the maximum capacity of orcs that we could technically have. However, that's where the game's actually wrong, because the cap is much higher than that, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's much, much higher than that. Ah, and look, it's filling up now, ladies and gentlemen. The squad of orcs. Now, the issue is, as much I'd love to add more orcs to these squads, because each of these squads can be 16 men strong. Uh, at the moment, they're all just four men strong. So we need to fill them up with free conscript. How are we going to do that? Well, it's actually pretty easy, ladies and gentlemen. To pull off this exploit, simply press menu and save the game. And then once you've saved the game, all you need to do is load the game. You don't even need to close the game. You literally just hit escape and load. And then once you load in, something's pretty interesting because you'll notice our orc cap has suddenly dropped down to 17 out of 100 when it was at 100 exactly not that long ago. This means I'm now able to spam the button to add even more orcs to all of these squads and it's going to be increasing our orc cap up there in the top of the screen. Look at us, we're just able to bypass that orc cap completely. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, I've just spoken to Gorgutz himself and he's offered me and all of my fans a once in a lifetime opportunity. The first 6,000 people to like this video will be spared when Gorgutz inevitably travels to our world and current timeline and phase shifts into reality 400,000 million orcs. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to survive the final boss of 2020, so make sure that you're going to be spared. Thank you Gorgutz for your immense generosity and I for one welcome our new orky overlords. Anyway, let's jump back into the video. Oh, here it comes. Oh yes, look at this, it's really starting to flesh out now. Now the FPS of the game will start tanking uh, because the game only wants us to have a small amount of orcs on screen at any one time and we've decided to tell the game no and instead we're having as many orcs on screen as I feel like, which as you can guess is a whole bunch of orcs. But there you go, once again we've hit the orc cap ladies and gentlemen. This is the maximum amount of orcs now that we are allowed to have, but of course the orc cap hasn't really been hit, it's only a minor temporary setback of lies. We have actually bypassed this completely ladies and gentlemen. So once again just drop down a save file, then simply reload the save file once more and now we're in the exact same situation where we have this huge massive group of orcs that aren't counting to our maximum unit cap, meaning we can just add even more orcs. It's it's insane. It's absolutely insane. All right, now I have made a tank um, just because I felt it probably made sense to make a tank. Uh, at the same time, it doesn't really matter if I have a tank or not because the game's over. I might as well give all of these squads flamethrowers uh, because what, what could go wrong with arming a whole bunch of green mushroom people with napalm? I'm sure no war crimes could possibly come from this. Now, once again, we'll just also flesh out the squads with new members just to really max them out. Make sure they hit all of their unit caps. Make sure that every squad has a knob leader, of course. Everyone needs a knob leader. Right, Tau listening post versus very inaccurate Orc Tank. Go Orc Tank. I mean, you can't really land the shots, but he's really trying. Uh, the Tau have noticed now, but it doesn't really matter. Come on, this is a tank. It's actually quite a premium vehicle. Uh, so the Tau aren't doing their best to stop it, but as I mentioned, these banners are generally going to mop up most of the Tau. Right, now once again, I've hit our unit cap, so it's time for me to back out, save the game and reload in and increase the
the orcs. And now there we go, the unit cap is refreshed once again. We're now in the perfect spot to increase all of our soldiers once more. Make sure everyone gets a flamethrower as well. And there we go, we've now really built a horde which really does match the likes that you'd love to see in Warhammer. I mean, if you're playing this on the Warhammer tabletop game, if all of these orcs had to do a firing phase, you'd probably need an entire dumper truck of dice to roll all of the shots. But luckily, this is a video game, so the game does all of those calculations for you. All right, I'm pretty sure this is as many men as I will ever need. So um, I'm going to select all of them now and uh, just try and vaguely march towards the enemy. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a... Uh, a Tau listening post here. So let's just get everyone to focus on that. As you can see, damage is not really something we do, but numbers is definitely what we do. There we go. We've taken the listening post. Oh, here comes a single crute. Um, I can't see it anymore. There it is. It's on fire, I think. And they're running now. The, the crute are running. I, I would also run. Um, this isn't really something that any army was really designed to fight against. I mean, from the Tau perspective, this is just a valley filled with orcs and it never ends and the orcs can get thrown around and they land but it's kind of like rumble tumbling they just keep on coming oh my goodness they're just trying to retreat around here there is no retreat there is no escape from the endless orc backlog there are so many orcs there is a traffic jam of orcs oh my goodness where are the orcs going where are you going why are you wandering all the way over here oh my goodness this is a pathfinding nightmare right we're just gonna walk the orcs into the enemy base and just leave them there and they'll probably aggro on the right enemies. All right, just go over there. Perfect. All right, into combat we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here comes the first conga line of orcs. We've got our knob leader here, the leader of the knobs. And here we come. As soon as we get all of the orcs standing around the Tau barracks here. Well, actually, we shouldn't aim for the Tau barracks. We should go for the Kadra headquarters here. God, we're just walking through the enemy base. All right, go to the headquarters. Go. Go to the headquarters. All right, I'm going to activate the power of the warg. There we go. That's buffed everyone around us with the warg. Everyone can just begin wailing away on the enemy headquarters. All we need to do is destroy this building and then we've won. Oh, the FPS is really chunking now. This is premium orc action. Most of the orcs didn't even make it in. A lot of them are just getting thrown around by plasma grenades and trying to melt buildings with fire. Uh, they're actually managing it. They really are. There are bullets flying everywhere. Orcs aren't very accurate, so... Probably they're just going to shoot themselves 50% of the time. But there we go. We took down the base. Immediately the enemy surrendered. Look at that. Victory. Look at that. We absolutely decimated them. Right. Now, I considered attacking the Tau main base. But then I realized that actually what's far more exciting is just to attack a random heavily defended Tau territory and swarm it with an unlimited quantity of orcs. And so that's what I've decided to do. I have a copious quantity of orcs right here. I'm equipping as many of them as I can with Geneva convention violating flamethrowers because flamethrowers are absolutely hilarious. Alright, now once again I've hit my unit cap. Oh, I've actually got spare space for banners. Okay, right, let's just spam out a few more banners. Now, I just love these orcs because they are just so absolutely hilarious. Just the fact that you can have an unlimited quantity of them is great. Now, there are many reasons why games like this did have unit caps. I mean, one of the most important reasons was the game simply couldn't handle having that many units on screen. And so if you went to a large, say, 4v4 map with a whole bunch of players, by the time you're hitting late game and everyone's pushing their unit cap, PCs start chunking and things start bursting into flames. That's why games had to self-impose limitations for balancing sake, but also so that the game didn't just always crash. However, with exploits like this, we can bypass such limitations. Oh my god, just the sheer quantity of green on this map is insane. There is just no end to the amount of all. Oh, we're gonna be creating a lovely mess. The mini-map is just getting slow slowly more and more green as we just expand the ever encroaching tide of orc and uh, my goodness we filled it up entirely again oh my god right once again i've reloaded the save now we're back down to 17 troop cap oh my god this is just um insanity absolute insanity now if you were to also try this exploit to this extent and flood the map with this many orcs then your game will actually just crash uh, i actually had to go into the files of this game and inject a huge amount of code to convince 
convinced the game to actually use more than 2 gigabytes of RAM. And now that I've managed to do that, uh, the game actually runs surprisingly well. Right, now um, we've got a whole bunch of orcs, but I'm pretty sure we can get even more, so I'm going to reload this even further and push this really to its limits. Oh my god, it's really getting a bit insane now. Oh god, about every time we reload the save file, we get another 100 or so orcs on the screen, right? Now I'm on probably save file iteration number 5. So what we're looking at here is an army of probably encroaching on 500 orcs. In a game where armies are normally limited to being around about 30 strong, um, having over 500 orcs is probably quite a distinct advantage. You know, whilst I've got all these dense orcs packed into one location, it's time for a scientific experiment. Uh, we're going to get the Mad Doctor to deploy a burner bomb just right into the centre of all of these orcs. There we go, place down that bomb. Perfect. Uh, now let's get everyone to stand next to it and um, watch as orcs fly. Truly beautiful art. Surprisingly, we lost zero orcs in that incident. Oh, and here come the Tau, ladies and gentlemen. They've come all of this way to try and attack us. Uh, naturally, they won't be able to break through the defenses of our base at all. Now, you know what? Seeing as the Tau are attacking us, it's time for us to move our army of 500 orcs straight into their base. Um, we'll send a top detachment that way and a lower detachment around this side of the map. Let's go, orcs. Orcs, charge, my friends. Go! The green tide is coming, ladies and gentlemen. It's a little bit slow, and it does get stuck on itself, but the green tide is on its way. Well, now we have the clash of the orcs and the tower in the bottom of the map here. Uh, it is around about 200 orcs versus a few tanks and some highly trained tower units. Of course, um, it's not going to be enough to win because we have a near-infinite quantity of flamethrowers. And equally, we can actually just keep spawning more orcs in as we fight now. We've really made our way into the central base of the orcs now. You know, I think it's a great time to, oh, realize that there's still a massive traffic jam. <laughs> Half the orcs haven't even left the starting area because they don't know how to get out. This has been an absolutely incredible fight in the bottom. Uh, 300 orcs versus a whole bunch of super spicy fire warriors. And you know what? I'd say it's been a relative success. Now, um, we're mostly just tearing through through the Tau central base at the moment. Uh, they're not really able to do anything to stop us because of our sheer incredible numbers. Uh, there is still a massive traffic jam though. The traffic jam hasn't changed at all. Oh my goodness, these broadside battlesuits weren't built for melee combat. In fact, I don't think any Tau unit was built for melee combat, which is generally one of the reasons why they're not in the best position to fight us. Anyway, um, the Green Tide has of course won today with its sheer overwhelming numbers. If we'd wanted to, we could have walked 200 infantry straight into their main base and just destroyed the headquarters to win immediately. Now in the south of the map uh, the orcs won their engagement. I think around about 50 or so survived there which is great. Now because we've been glitching the game with the save file technically we're a troop orc count of zero um, because the game doesn't actually know how to calculate how many troops we do or don't have. Right now we are just tearing through the Tau base. They keep dropping in basic vehicles and infantry squads but they're not going to be able to do anything to stop the legend Legendary Gorguts the Warlord on his mad quest of just trying to spawn as much green into the world as possible. He's kind of a bit like an environmentalist, you see. Gorguts isn't a bad person. I mean, he was born from mushrooms. And he just wants to see more green spread around the world, like most environmentalists do. The only difference between him and most environmentalists is he intends to spread the green tide via decapitating all of his enemies. And here it comes, the end of the tower, ladies and gentlemen. No matter what they do, there is just simply no way for them to stop us. The AI is trying to cheat in as many vehicles as possible. Vehicles aren't going to stop me. Their base has already been lost. Oh my goodness, right, there goes the Tau headquarters. That's it. Game over, I'm pretty sure. Yep, that's it. <laughs> We've done it. A glorious victory for Gorguts and the boys, ladies and gentlemen. What a truly powerful monstrosity. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is how to completely destroy one of my favorite games of all time, Dawn of War. All you have to do is simply reload and close a save file repeatedly and what you end up with is the most stupidly absurd and entertaining orc simulator that the 40k universe has ever seen. As always if you've enjoyed today's chaos then make sure to give the video a like and hop down into the comment section where I hope
hope to see a lot of people spamming the word orc. Now when it comes to what video comes next ladies and gentlemen I'm afraid it's all up to you so hop on down to the comment section as well and vote on what exploit I try and do next. Do you A want to see me exploit Cyberpunk 2077? B do you want me to exploit Dawn of War 2? Or C do you want me to exploit Total War Warhammer 2 because there's some spicy new exploits in that bad boy? Anyway hop on down to the comment section and make your vote known. As always a massive thank you to each and every one of my patrons who make these fantastic videos all the more possible. I mean genuinely there's a huge amount of you who make these videos possible. Everyone who likes a video, everyone who just watches a video and everyone who comments on a video. It is insane how many of you are so supportive of our fantastic community. We really wouldn't be here without you so thank you very much. And heck if you sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next on this fantastic platform then look no further than this one on screen now. Hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you and trust me you're going to love it. Anyway I've been the Spiffing Brit ladies and gentlemen have an absolutely lovely day and I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Goodbye for now.